In real life, nothing ever equals exactly what it's supposed to. It's always a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. Hence the term inequalities, not equal, inequalities. If we want to graph or look at a picture of all the possible answers to this equation, x, all the x's that are bigger than or equal to 3, there's way more than one answer now, and that's the way life is. Is 5 bigger than or equal to 3? Well, it is. So we want to put a dot or a shade on 5. Is 8 bigger than or equal to 3? Well, yes, it is. Once again, more than one answer, isn't there? In fact, it's going to be a lot. But not any answer, any number is an answer. For instance, is 1 bigger than or equal to 3? It isn't. So we don't shade 1. We're only shading the places that make the uh, equation true. Now is 3 bigger than or equal to 3? It is equal, so we shade it. What about the numbers in between? 6 and a half. Well, 6 and a half is bigger than or equal to 3, isn't it? So all the numbers in between all those numbers are going to be true also. So we end up shading, we have to shade because we can't, we'll be here all day trying to put all the dots on there. Now 102 is also bigger than or equal to 3, but we don't see it on the graph, but we need to represent it. He's way out there, isn't it? So what we do is we put an arrow. Make sure you put that arrow or you won't be representing all of the correct answers when you graph an inequality such as this equation. Now let's do another one that's a little bit different. This is red. X is less than 4. There's no or equal to. Now 5 is not less than 4. So we don't shade it, obviously. We only want to shade the values that make this x true, this equation true. 2 is less than 4. Negative 1, just because he's negative, doesn't mean that it's not true. What does it mean to be less than? It means that you're further to the left on the number line. And negative 1 is, in fact, to the left of 4, so it's less than 4. 1.25, the numbers in between, can also be uh, included here as well. And 1.25, where is that? He's to the left of 4 also. Now is 4 less than 4? It isn't. So what we're going to do, we're not going to shade him. But 3.999 is, and 3.5 is. So what we do when we have a less than but not an or equal to, is we circle it, okay? Certainly, that, that's supposed to show that it's all the numbers right up close to 4, 3.999, but not 4. Now, once again, we have numbers to the left that go on forever that are not in the picture. So you have to use, use the arrow, okay? So it's the same game here, except when it's not an or equal to, you're going to have to circle the number. Okay, so let's do a summary of, of what our endpoints, if you would, are going to look like. If it's a greater than or equal to sign, or a less than or equal to sign, it's going to be a solid circle at the end, because we want to include the endpoint because of the or equal. If it's just a less than sign, or just a greater than sign, it's going to be what we'll call it an open circle. Because we don't want to include that, because it's not our equal to. So it looks looks like that, OK? Now, how do we solve this equation when it's not an equals? Well, basically, we do the same thing. We get the letter alone. Now, who's keeping him from being alone? the 3 and the 7. I'm going to get rid of the 7 first. Got to do it to both sides. And let's see what we'll have. On the left, I'll have 3x 
and on the right 43 minus 7 is 36. Now all I have to do to get the x alone is get rid of the 3. The 3 is multiplying, so I'll divide. Uh -oh. Got to do it on both sides. And I'll have x, 1x, well I don't write 1x, I write x, that's why I got rid, tried to get rid of the 3, not to create a 1. x is greater than 12. <laughs> okay, and then I would graph it, I would draw a picture. Well, I guess if I wanted to graph x is greater than 12, I'd at least have to put a 12. It's going to be a circle because I don't want to include the endpoint. And there's your answer. Okay, that's what we'd expect you to be. When we say solve and graph, you're going to have to begin by getting the variable alone and then graph the resulting inequality. Now, I hope you're seeing that it's basically the exact same way that we solve equalities, except there's going to be one little difference that you need to understand. If you take a look at this inequality, I, I, I could read that 4 is less than 8. I know that, dude. Okay, and 4 is less than 8. Now, if I do what I would do to a normal equation, I just pulled 2 out of my hat. If I just add 2 to both sides, I get 6 and I get 10, and it's still true. 6 is less than 10. Point is, as long as you do the same thing to both sides, like an equality, everything stays true. Let's try doing something else to both sides. Maybe I'll multiply by 2. Seems fair. I get 12 and I get 20, and son of a gun, 12 is still less than 20. Darn tootin'. Well, let's try another operation to both sides. Let's divide both sides by negative 4. And I get negative 3 is less than negative 5. Now wait a minute. Negative 3 isn't to the left of negative 5. It's to the right. Negative 3 is not less than negative 5. Wait a minute. So, you can do the same thing to both sides of an, of an equation, of an inequality equation, but if you divide, or if you multiply, but you won't be multiplying, most of you'll be dividing. If you divide both sides by a negative number, you have to flip the sign to make it true. So you'll have to remember that. That's the one difference. If you divide by a negative number, and as you can see why, hopefully, you'll have to switch the sign. So let's try and solve this one. I'm going to do it twice and show you there's, a, there's two ways to do it, but a smart way to do, smarter way to do it than, than other ways. First, let's combine, as usual, uh, like terms that are on the same side. Okay, the 42 and the minus 5 get together and become 37. Now, I have to get all the variables on one side before I start getting the variable alone. Okay? One thing, one way to do it would be to subtract 3z. Of course, I'd have to do it from both sides. The reason I would do that is because then, if you look at the right side, there is no z's anymore, and I can begin solving for z uh, on the left. Well, let's see. I'm going to have to get rid of the 7, and I'm going to have to get rid of the minus 5. Let's begin by getting rid of the 7, because I have to do it to both sides. And I get minus 5z is greater than 30. Now I have to get rid of the minus 5, who is multiplying, and he's a negative. So I'm going to divide both sides by a negative. Now what did we just tell you when you divide both sides by a negative? I've got to switch the sign. So I did my division and I flipped the sign and the final result here is that z is less than negative 6. You'll have to remember when you divide by a negative you have to flip the sign. Okay? Now Let's take another approach to this same problem and make life a little bit easier for you. I, and This is my recommendation. We're still going to begin by adding the two like terms on the same side. But now, instead of subtracting a 3z, I'm going to add a 2z. 
Hmm, what is that going to buy me? Well, it's going to get rid of the Z's on the left side this time. And now 7's not bothering me. Who's keeping the Z from being alone? The 37 and the 5. So I'll begin by subtracting 37 from both sides. And now I'll divide by, I'm dividing by a positive 5. Should I switch the sign? Should I switch the sign when I'm dividing by a positive? I do not flip the sign. And this, believe it or not, will still, it'll still get the same answer. Should be read, I have to read the letter first because that's what I'm drawing a picture of. Should be read Z is less than negative 6. The mouth is opening to the negative 6, so he's greater. So Z is less. You're either greater or less. You have to say the letter first, even if you have to read it backwards. Okay? So the idea here is if you always pick on the little guy when you're trying to get you know variables out of there, you won't get a negative. So always bring the smaller variable over to the bigger one, and you won't have to worry about this flip the sign thing. OK, let's take a look at graphing this conjunction now. Here again, we're going to have to know how to read uh, some of these things backwards because you have to say the letter first because that's what you're trying to draw a picture of. And we're going to break this into two smaller inequalities. One of them, x is greater than 0, would look like that, wouldn't it? The other one, x is less than or equal to 5, would look like this. Now what we're trying to do for our final answer is get a picture of what makes both of those inequalities true. What is both simultaneously greater than 0 and also less than or equal to 5. In our picture we'd be asking you what is both red and blue. And a conjunction the important thing is, is, your final answer? is not going to look like this. It's going to be the orange part here. I call it a barbell. It's basically a, a between, if you would. But we're not going to include 0, and we are going to include 5, because we do not have an or equal to on the uh, 0 part, and we do have an or equal to on the 5 part. Cool. So that's your answer, right? That would be your final answer for what we call a conjunction. Hmm. A conjunction means both have to be true. So I want to use the word and. Okay, that's what a conjunction means. Basically, it's the intersection of both graphs. Now, and is quite different, obviously, from or. If I give you something like this, we're going to do it differently because it is an or. I'm going to graph this when x is less than or equal to negative 1, and x is greater than 6. Now this is an or. As long as you're red or blue, you're going to be part of the answer. You don't have to be red and blue. Okay, so where is one or the other true? One or the other. It's much easier to be on red or blue. Well, the answer to this what is called a disjunction, since it's an or and not an and, is this picture here. Okay? It's an or, so we use the word disjunction. I want to use another word, union, as opposed to intersection. Because a union, all you have to be in is one set or the other set to be a part of the answer. Okay? Okay, well that's probably enough for now. Okay, well then why don't you go practice it? Go do your homework.